Snastruck. Hello and welcome to another edition of Drunk with Nintendo Power, a series where I try my best to film and flip through an old issue of Nintendo Power despite my amateurish filmmaker capabilities. We've covered volume 25 and 26, so this time let's keep right on going and check out volume 27, featuring Mega Man in Dr. Wily's Revenge for Game Boy on the cover. Again, I want to thank everyone, subscribe to my Patreon page for making this happen. We'll start as usual with the mailbag, and the first letter here asks about the upcoming Super Nintendo and when it's coming to Canada. The response here is pretty interesting, saying that their manufacturing facilities have been taxed to the max to meet the high demand, so everything is in short supply, and they probably won't be able to get any consoles to Canada until 1992 at the earliest. What's the old saying? The more things change, the more they stay the same. The Nestor's Adventures comic sees Nestor looking for his mother's keys, but gets sidetracked when talking about the latest Robin Hood game for NES. Yeah, I always skipped looking at these when I was a kid. Classified information features cheat codes for Hunt for Red October, and it details the warp zones for Battletoads, which can be found in levels 1, 3, 4, and 6. Even today, this is extremely useful information. There's also a tip to refill your items in Vice Project Doom, an unlimited lives cheat in Bart vs. the Space Mutants, simultaneous two-player continue in Ikari Warriors 3, a mulligan cheat in NES Open, and a Mega Man 3 cheat where you can freeze a boss fight by holding up and A on the second controller. Pretty interesting. The NES Achievers section shows up early here, featuring a lot of people who managed to finish Dragon Warrior 2. I guess the tips from the last month's issue must have helped. Counselor's Corner also makes an early appearance, and sure enough, here's another what the hell do I do question regarding Dragon Warrior 2. Anytime you saw simple questions like this regarding a game, you knew to stay away from it. There's also questions about the stones in Ultima Quest of the Avatar, there's Battletoads, the Lone Ranger, and Bart vs. the Space Mutants. This month's counselors are pictured here, and this guy's best accomplishment is that he finished Street Fighter 2010 with one life. I didn't know what that game was back then, but now that I do today, I can confirm that that is slightly insane. This month's poster is a doozy featuring the upcoming Star Wars game on NES. So yeah, people are looking on eBay for this issue just for this poster. There's also a couple different contests here, the first being to design your own Game Boy, which I guess really means what kind of stickers and colors and stuff would you use to make your Game Boy look all weird. The other contest is to win Bill and Ted's telephone booth. Now that would be cool as hell to have. Now playing in August 1991 has the fourth NES Jeopardy game called Super Jeopardy, a game called Triumph, Captain Planet, and one of the worst games of all time, Where's Waldo? Check out the scores Nintendo Power gave that one, and they're usually really forgiving. Wow, what a turd of a game. Interestingly, there's also an ad here saying, hey, Nintendo makes more than games, advertising stuff like books and this FM transmitter that you can plug into your NES. I didn't even know this thing existed. This month's top 30, yup, you guessed it, Super Mario Bros. 3 is number one. There's not much new to say here, it's just the same old, same old. There's only two new titles out of the 30, Monopoly and Dick Tracy. The celebrity profile finally features someone who you might actually know, it's Macaulay Culkin, which features this quote, It's fun to be a celebrity, I really can't think of any drawbacks, acting's the best. I think you might feel a little differently today. Packwatch previews Bioforce Ape, Nightshade, and Kickmaster, as well as something called the Consumer Electronics Show. Yeah, they existed even back then. The Super Nintendo previewed a series of games there, everything from Super Ghouls and Ghosts to Draken to Equinox to WWF Super WrestleMania. There's a new section here titled Super Nintendo Development Watch, and it talks about Zelda 3, in particular the direction the story will take, saying the plot and story are more involved? Eh, I don't know about that. There's also a couple blurbs on Castlevania 4 and Super Ghouls and Ghosts, saying the latter isn't a game for the weak at heart or the easily frustrated. Yeah, no kidding. Let's move on to the main features here. Despite Mega Man and Dr. Wily's Revenge for Game Boy being on the cover, the big feature here is for Ninja Gaiden 3 for NES. Interestingly enough, it says here, rumor has it, this is Ryu's final appearance. I'm not sure if they were saying this is the last NES Ninja Gaiden game, which would have been pretty obvious at the time, or just the last Ninja Gaiden game ever, or what. But it's an interesting statement in hindsight. But yeah, the full Nintendo Power treatment is here with maps and hints on how to beat bosses, like here where it lets you know to attack the mutant twin on the right first. There's also a section on Dragon Warrior 2 and 3, laying out a brief history of the series, which is nicely done. In particular, Dragon Warrior 3 has more hand-holding than I've seen most games get in Nintendo Power. It's pretty direct in telling you where to go and where to find stuff. You can tell they really wanted these games to catch on in North America like they did in Japan, but they were just too cryptic and confusing. There's also a feature on Darkman, a game based off of the Bruce Willis movie. 
Mega Man and Dr. Wily's Revenge only gets six pages, which is pretty dang short for a game featured on the cover, but I guess everything is pretty straightforward in this game. Remember, this came out just after Mega Man 3, so audiences weren't quite burnt out on the series just yet. They do reuse Robot Masters from the first Mega Man game, though, so that's a little disappointing. Still, all the maps are here, including for the Dr. Wily stages. A bunch of other Game Boy games are featured here as well, like Final Fantasy Legend 2, a game I did a video on and is way more worth your time than any of the NES Dragon Warrior games this issue talks about. And there's also Days of Thunder, as well as codes for Mysterium, Ninja Boy, and Go Go Tank. Finally, we get our first extended look at some Super Nintendo games, namely Super Mario World, Gradius 3, and ActRaiser. Again, like the past couple issues, they make sure to stress that these games, Mario World in particular, aren't just NES games with better graphics, saying that Mario and the enemies and bosses have a lot more capabilities that just weren't possible before, like the ghost houses, secret areas you can unlock, the different boss fights, and of course, Yoshi. The overworld map illustration here is fantastic. The Gradius 3 preview here makes sure to emphasize the sheer size of the bosses you'll fight. Plus, I mean, the pictures here really give you an idea of how freaking hard this game will be. And it also talks about all the different weapons you can choose from. The ActRaiser preview is interesting to look at with hindsight because it's evident Nintendo really had high hopes for this game, talking about the cinematic soundtrack and the unique gameplay, but I think they recognize that people might be confused by the switches between what they call creation mode and action modes, so they carefully lay out what you're supposed to do and how you're expected to go about things. That was probably a good idea since ActRaiser is definitely a game where you're better off reading the instruction book or a guide before playing. So yeah, that's about it. That wraps up another edition of Drunk with Nintendo Power. I want to thank you for watching and have a good rest of your day.